beyond small and mid-priced homes, all the way up to the very top of the luxury housing market into the rarefied world of buyers with tens of millions of dollars to spend on a home. Insight now from Dolly Lenz with Douglas Elliman and the number one realtor in the entire country with over $7 billion in residential sales under her belt. Also Bob Hassett at Russ, uh, at Russ Lyon Sotheby's International. Welcome to Power Lunch, both of you. Dolly, I'll begin with you. I mean, yes, we've heard about the foreclosure freeze and it's affecting uh, a lot of the, the lower priced homes, you could say. But you're saying that you're actually beginning to see sentiment shift among high-end buyers because they're concerned about what's going on within the overall market? You know, it's a whole negative zeitgeist in the real estate world. And the negative zeitgeist goes from the bottom all the way up to the top. And, and the biggest problem is nobody really knows what is the future value of property going to be. Not that you ever know, but you have a better idea. And if you don't have confidence in the current value, or in the future value, why should you proceed? I mean, it's a big problem. So, Dolly, what kind of effect do you think it could really have on a housing market that's really just starting and trying to stabilize? Well, I can tell you I had two closings, big closings last week, both well over $10 million. And both independent buyers decided to renegotiate the sales price at the closing. They said, you know what? We don't believe in the value of this property anymore. We don't want to proceed. If you don't do something for me, I'm not closing. Now, it turned out that both of them wound up closing, but, it, but it's a real problem. I mean, at over 10 million, at over 12 million, at over 15 million, it's, it's just shocking. Are you seeing the same thing out in your neck of the woods out in Arizona, Bob? And no, if so, what kind of renegotiation are you, are you seeing in terms of percentages? We're not seeing those astronomical levels anymore that we were a few years ago, but we are seeing the same sort of problems that they're having. Uh, I've recently had a couple deals fall apart myself that were a day or two before the closing, and uh, the banks changed their minds, made some new demands on the buyer, and they just wouldn't perform, and they mm -hmm. decided that they'd just wait and see what happened at the end. I had were these foreclosures, uh, Bob? Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. These yes, they were. Closures. Yes, I also had uh, one a little while back that we had sold for a million one fifty, for example. Uh, it, it tied up for about three months. Uh, they canceled the deal. The buyer walked away. We've now got it sold again for eight hundred eighty thousand. So, and these are all problems that I attribute directly to the to the bank's uh, red tape. Uh, tying these things up and the buyers just getting frustrated and moving on. Well, Dolly, I mean, sentiment, psychology, all of this is, these are very important components to the housing market, are they not? Oh, there's no question. I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm finding that I'm spending 50% of my time, you know, being psychologist, uh, mm -hmm. holding people's hands, getting them over the finish line. Uh, versus actually selling or doing something that I normally would do, marketing or something else. But if you don't have that, you know, 11th hour, good luck, you're, you're dead. It's over. Bob what, Bob, what is your advice for someone who, who says, boy, now's the time to go out there into uh, Arizona where there are lots of properties in foreclosure and find a bargain? Can they do it? Absolutely. I, I, that's what I was and doing. how do you get through the bank's red tape then if, if I say, hey, I want to come and buy something from you. Well, most of these people that are buying are cash buyers, so that certainly simplifies the whole process if, if they are in fact cash. We've had over 600 homes over a million dollars sell uh, year to date in Arizona, which is not bad. I mean, it may be 20, 25 percent off our norms, but that's not bad, all things considered. But I, you know, my advice to people is, and, and in most cases, as I said, when there's strictly cash buyers, They've got the ability to be patient, and that's what it takes to really be able to capitalize on these on these incredible historic levels of buying opportunity that we have here in the Valley. But the so ability patience to be is patient the key. is the problem, I find. Their ability to be patient is exactly what stalls the whole market. It's because they are being patient, and therefore the market is slowing down. They're waiting for a lower price, you mean, Dolly? They're waiting for a lower price, yeah. a better deal in some fashion. They're waiting for something. Right, well, because there, there's a feeling, I suppose, and when you see the headlines every day and, and talk of the foreclosure freeze, even though it may be among lower priced properties, it starts to kick in in terms of sentiment, in terms of psychology, and, and I think that's the point you're making, Dolly. Yeah, exactly, which is a problem across the board. Okay, we got to leave it there, Dolly, Bob. Thank